What is going on everyone? Griffin here coming at you with some Ronin gameplay and today we're going to be talking about the new map Meltdown. So let's check it out. So things are a little bit different as you can see. We didn't do the proper introduction as you as you could call it but basically what happened was OBS didn't record all of the audio. It just recorded the game audio for whatever reason and it is what it is. So we're just going to be trying to talk over the entire length of the video. If me actually talking right now doesn't cover the full length then it's just going to be me playing the game with no audio except for the gameplay audio. So if you want to check it out, hey, go for it. It's cool with me. But let's talk about the new map, Meltdown. So they released this playlist that has all of these different game modes in it. And they did the same thing with Wanted. They did the same thing with the arena when it came out like over a year ago at this point. And I'm so, so happy that they are putting these playlists, these limited time modes in the game that actually showcase all these different game modes on this specific map i love it i think that it is just an incredible addition into the game first and foremost i can't praise that enough this is something that we desperately needed for a very very long time especially with new maps being released that you rarely ever got to play and they actually had to go in and increase the appearance rate of those maps but meltdown I love the aesthetic of this map. I think that this has been one of the best maps, in my opinion, that they've developed so far. It feels like it is a gigantic, just huge map. In reality, it is a pretty good sized map, but I don't think it's not that much bigger than a couple of the other maps that we currently have in the game right now. I feel like there is a ton more cover and there's less dead spots. And what I mean by dead spot is just a wide open area where there's not much cover. You start taking damage. You can't really roll into cover or find any way to evade these shots coming in. It feels like there's a lot less of that, which there of course is some dead spots in the map, but if there's not as many dead spots in this map as there are on some of the other maps. Like if, if you take Breach, for example, right? Breach has some minor cover on some areas of the map, but that minor cover, because of some of the height differences and stuff, really doesn't provide that much traditional cover in that sense. You can still get shot behind it in a lot of ways. Compared to a map like this, you're moving around. You have like head high cover pretty much everywhere. And the chest high cover or the mid cover, as they call it, is on the upper tiers. So it's a risk versus reward situation. Yes, you can get behind this box. You're going to have to crouch. Whenever you pop out, you're going to be very, very easy to hit. This person that's trying to push up to you, they're going to have full cover. So you're really going to have to watch the way that they play and, and really take notice of how they rotate in order to be successful in those situations. I feel like... You know, this is some next tier, next level. I love what they did with the zipline on this, going from one side of the map all the way to the other side of the map. It is a very long zipline. Yes, there are ways to shoot people off of this zipline, but for the most part, you're going to be completely covered whenever you make this rotation. And it feels really good, and it's a really interesting way of how you can access one side of the map and then go to the other side of the map very, very quickly. As for the crane that's in the map, seen some people land up on this crane i've actually seen some people land up there and try to snap off of this crane yes it's cool that one side of the map gets access to this crane i haven't really tinkered with it enough to see if you can accurately see rotations whenever you're up there in a demolition sense but i do think that it is something very interesting and very unique that allows you to get that leg up by putting someone in danger and and i like that idea a lot i love the idea of risk versus reward especially in a game like this and that is a prime example of risk versus reward right there are you going to put yourself in in harm's way and potentially get down in order to see more information or to get some type of intel you have to make that decision and i love that about it as far as like the way that the map is actually designed, it feels very familiar. It feels very much inside of the Rogue Company universe, but it feels different enough and unique enough that it feels like it's a whole new place that we haven't been to yet. And in my opinion, it's very hard to kind of capture that. Like whenever you have games that have very specific art direction and very like unique or cartoony style graphics, it's easy to make that happen because of course you're going to have this artistic aesthetic to it that is going to kind of unify all of these maps together in that way. You also have other games that are a little bit more lifelike, I guess you could say, and it feels like different people come in and design different maps, and they're really not skinned out correctly. Like Some feel like they're from this game, some feel like they're from this game, but everything that Rogue Company has released, even Palace, 
Palace is probably the most unique map that they've released, in my opinion, and it still feels like Rogue Company. So whoever's doing their art direction and keeping everything on track over at First Watch Games, they're doing an absolutely incredible job with kind of unifying all of these aesthetics and unifying all these assets into something that is familiar yet new, and it is just incredible. I'm getting some amazing performance when I play this map. I don't know if it's the playlist, like the LTM playlist, that I'm actually getting that much success with, or if it's just the fact that like they've went in and they've tinkered with 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 how everything is rendered in game and to be less taxing on your system. But if I compare this with Palace one more time, when I play Palace now, and there's not a lot of stuff going on inside of Palace, but when I play Palace. I get crazy frame drops, I get stuttering, I get hitching issues all over the place. When I load into this map, when I drop into Meltdown, I don't get hardly any of that. And it's insane because there's way more stuff going on in Meltdown than there is in Palace. So I don't know what the deal is, but they've done a really good job at optimizing the map and making it feel good and play good. That center area where the square is that has four different entry points into it, is just an incredible addition into the game with it having multi tiers and the way that the cover system works around the inner side of that like square cube style area it just makes it feel really really good and there's not a lot of cover whenever you're inside of it so if you try to push into one of the boxes that's actually there you can get shot from one side or the other someone's going to have to put themselves at risk in order to do that but that is still there and it feels really cool and really interesting to actually play inside of that area and it feels like that's the central hub of the map like that is the center point of the map it's kind of like the bridge on palace or it's kind of like the half wall in in breach or the fountain in uh windward like there's all these maps that have this this center signifier but nothing as good as this in my opinion so it feels like a great addition to the game. I can't wait to play it uh, more on Demolition. We have played a couple of Demolition matches and custom games, and it feels really cool. And, and I want to know more how the rotations feel on it. It doesn't feel like it's too far out of the way, but it does feel like there is some sense of urgency once you hear that the bomb has been planted. So I do like that a lot, and it kind of dictates what rogues are going to be played on this map and also who the best rogues are going to be to play on this map so i like that a lot but let me know what you think in the comment section down below also be sure to check the description for links to facebook discord and twitter those are the places to contact me and if you haven't already please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel also on thursdays i will be streaming from 8 p.m until 11 p.m central time so if you're interested, please stop by and check that out. We're going to be doing some custom games or we'll do, be doing some public matches with anybody that wants to hop on. And then also on Sunday from 10 a.m. until we get tired of playing, we are going to be playing Bioshock 2 and then transitioning into Bioshock Infinite in the future. So if you have a couple of free minutes and you see me live, please be sure to stop by and say hello. We'll talk about Rogue Company or anything else you want to talk about. Possibly do some custom matches and have a good time. Thanks for watching, guys.